All right, it uh, should be uh, going live any second now. I'm getting the thing that I'm encoding frames. So uh, we're gonna jump into it. Um, howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to World Building Wednesday. Uh, I am uh, Brandon and once again joining us uh, is uh, Shelby. Um, and, Hello uh, everyone. And uh, we're gonna be tackling creatures today. So, um, as always, these things can be something beautiful that happen uh, live to all of you um, as you uh, watch it, and we could uh, make magic, or it uh, can crash and burn. It might be the most like uh, biggest waste of uh, thirty minutes of our lives, uh, but we'll uh, we'll find out. So, um, Shelby, do you want to describe a little bit more in depth what we're doing? Uh, absolutely, and it's probably going to be more of the latter than it is the former, <laughs> but. Uh, what we are going to attempt to do today is we are going to attempt to build a creature uh, in a collaborative form between me and Brandon here. And uh, we are going to try and uh, create this character and then we're going to take that creature and put it in both of our worlds um, as, uh, as a finished product. Okay, so... Um we did a tiny discussion about this and when i say tiny i mean like what 40 seconds maybe a yes. minute and a half uh before we started the stream about like where we were kind of aiming for the creature to be and both of our campaign settings we have a desert uh in the world so we're going to be aiming to uh put something um with a very uh deserty feel uh to it inside the world um I guess I will uh, jump on the uh, boat first, uh, since your your setting is a is a pretty kind of dystopian, or uh, or do you want to describe your setting a little bit? Uh, sure, it is a very uh, desert place. Uh, it is uh, um, if you've ever played in the Dark Sun. Uh, I wasn't originally going this direction, but it is very Dark Sun-esque uh, if you play d and uh, It is desert, there's going to be ruins, there's going to be uh, not a lot of water there. There will be metal, uh, which is different from the Dark Sun thing, but uh, it is, uh, think, uh, think apocalyptic, but without actually something like dying and spikes and mad max things it, it's a typical fantasy in that type of world though so i think one of the things that just characterize deserts as a uh setting in general is scarcity and a lack of stuff because um a i think a desert is more defined by you know like what it doesn't have inside of it uh and I feel survival elements are a little bit more uh, key um, when relating to a desert. Uh, so, uh, anything that we would put inside of there, and we're aiming for like a creature that's kind of like a, that's kind of like a natural denizen of the world. Uh, that was a question. That is correct. I would say yes to that. That it's a natural uh, born uh, thing. Okay, so if if for my setting um, specifically, the desert is uh, this. Uh, it's this field of war, essentially. Um, there are two. There are three factions, uh, just constantly clashing over these huge swaths of land, and uh, all over the uh, setting. You know, there are these ancient, decayed our ancient uh, lost forgotten cities um, and uh, the undead live on one side of the desert while the uh, bandits and uh, mercenaries live on the north side of the desert contested by the nation of Heimsdale which is a very organized military nation trying to encroach on the desert from the west. So all these forces are uh, clashing in the desert and it's this area of strife uh, war and uh, grief, also characterized by having very few resources. So, in traditional settings, or rather, so, so when you say uh, resources, are you referring to uh, metal? Are you referring to wood? 
are you referring to water? What exactly are you referring to? Yeah, I would say... I'm assuming sand. There's plenty of sand since you said desert. <laughs> There's no sand in the desert. No sand whatsoever. So um, metal isn't as uncommon of a thing because, uh, and this is a thing of my setting, um, in my world there are these earth fires that constantly burn and uh, they're just sections of the ground, um, sometimes on top of mountains, sometimes in fields. Uh, one is underwater in a... Um, in a uh, sea trench uh, and they are just divine areas of the earth that have been lit on fire by the gods. Uh, the divine fire um, seeps into the land and just causes veins of this uh, of this um, essentially holy metal to start uh, being created and uh, can be mined from the earth around it. So if they were ever desperate for metal you know, there is an earth fire in the desert where they can go and mine for this divine metal that's there. Even though, you know, things like iron, gold, or um, copper might be in short supply uh, traditionally inside of a desert. Okay, so so it's not metal, so metal's fine. Uh, what about uh, uh, wood? I'm assuming wood is not... Yeah, is Wood would be uh, wood would be much uh, much scarcer um, in this uh, area of the world. There's a huge forest uh, south of the desert, so the nations um, Heimsdale and uh, Darken Vale, the two nations that are clashing, o are two of the nations that are clashing over the desert, um, can you know farm all of the wood they need from that south region and export it back to their capitals. Um, but the desert itself, while trying to travel from, you know, like the south uh, to the north part of the continent, you know, you're not going to find much of any wood. Um, water itself is going to be very rare. Uh, other things in the desert that uh, define my setting, all my, any creature inside the desert is monstrous to live there. Um, okay. And that's a, that's an element of my world. Uh, as far as the undead, like there's undead that live, that occupy a good half of the desert. In order for them to live in that land, they had to blight the land and kill it. Um, and this is just going with the... Uh, okay, so this is blighted land, is basically... Well, no, no. The desert is regular land, but half of the desert is blighted. And uh, even if you were to import soil essentially over to this uh, area and um you know maybe get like an awning to shield you know your crops and stuff from the sun half the day nothing would grow here uh i got you the soul of the land is dead and uh this is you know dealing with the uh, traditional idea that undead have a problem with like running water uh like you know vampires can't walk across uh, moving water because uh, you know, like the vitality of the land pushes against them and stuff. Okay. Um. Yeah. So if I wanted to put a creature in my desert, I would look for the themes that are generally uh, present in the desert, and that it is a very hard life for anything moving around in this desert. And uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to have to fight something to survive. So I'd be looking to put a predator inside of my desert uh, as far as ecology goes. Uh, would that fit your setting? I think a predator would be fine in my setting. Um, uh, there was a couple of ideas and you can uh, that I have to that needs to be done. Um, what would account uh, in in the regular world in our world that we live in um the camel right yeah. a burden beast of burden that uh is not hampered by the desert in whatever way like the camel stores water it can make long distances it's basically the horse of the desert right so yeah. i need i need some type of beast of burden all right uh, since you want to do a predator, we can throw that out the window. But that is one of the things I need. Uh, another thing I was thinking of, have you ever seen uh, or have you ever played the game Borderlands? 
Yes. Well, I played Borderlands 2. I have a Doesn't matter. <laughs> Borderlands 2 has them too. Uh, there are these dog things the called skags. skags. Yeah. Yes. So I, I would like some coyote slash skag slash something along those lines uh, as well. Uh, that could be a predator. All right. Um, or we can go and delve into like a um, like a desert alligator, um, where he just kind of sits in there and, and waits and uh, well, attacks something. That's what I was uh, thinking about because um, w one of the things uh, about the desert, you know, not a lot of people are going to be passing through it. And uh, trying to roam through the desert and hunt in it would be any predator that evolves like hunting in that fashion would be, um, you know, would obviously have much better capacity to hunt in something like a forest or a plain or something like that. And uh, if, you know, these things were here for hundreds and hundreds of years, eventually they'd migrate to the better habitat for them. Okay, right. So, so oh, I was thinking uh, kind well, of like a... Even in our deserts, you still have snakes. And they kind of lie in wait, right? Yeah. Uh, it depends on what they hunt, right? Uh, uh, so in your world, is it basically there is no life? It's only undeath? Uh, in the desert? No. There's livestock in the desert. I have a couple weird creatures already for my desert. And um, I will uh, just kind of admit, um, there's a series I love, and I think if a series does something right, uh, you can borrow elements uh, as building blocks to build Absolutely. on, uh, rather than just saying, oh, they've already done it and nobody else can do it. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, um, wow. one of the great things about the world is they get so many fantastic creatures just by yep. combining two creatures um, that, you know, you wouldn't expect like a platypus bear or something like that. Right. Um, yep. In my world, one of the main beasts of burden for moving things across the desert are camel hounds. Um, they are just uh, very vicious uh, camel. They're camel-like creatures. Uh, if you imagine like a dire wolf uh, mashed up with a uh, camel, you know. Okay. They're just huge creatures and store a bit of water, aren't really affected by the uh, sunlight or, you know, uh, very quick moving across the uh, desert sands, very light footed. Um, and they are, you know, a better, sturdier uh, horse uh, for, you know, these conditions. Um, and I, you know. So if we got a, uh, if we have a predator that says hunts those I, are they wild do they run around yeah yeah uh they uh, can uh run around throughout the world um one thing and now and see i'm kind of uh i'm kind of in in between like do i want a flying creature or do i want a uh, creature that lies and waits do we want Ooh. both or do we want both? Well, why, why don't we come up with both? I, I like the idea of a flying creature. And to be honest with you, because it is fantasy, I think our flying creature needs to have two heads. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so I have another creature in my world that we can kind of loosely uh, base this off of. Uh, if you're like willing to work with that. Um, there are uh -huh. these otherworldly birds called um, albines, and uh, basically they're kind of like uh, albatrosses meet um, cranes or stork. Uh, well, more so cranes, and they're you know these two-headed birds that live in uh, essentially the plane of death, and they are attracted to death, um, and you know they're otherworldly in nature, but uh, perhaps something like that that was to get into the uh spiritual plane like these huge two-headed um carnivorous of uh, um carrion birds and then adding in you know kind of the element for them to uh 
lie in wait. So since you already have something with two heads, maybe you want to go with a... Uh, I, I like the idea, by the way. I might be stealing all of these ideas <laughs> and putting them in my world. Um, uh, I kind of... Like you talking about that, I had this image of what if this predator is like a giant toad with the big mouth and the big gullet and it's a flying thing and it just snatches these things out of the air and swallows them whole <laughs> so it's so it's big like or uh. maybe it's maybe the wings aren't big but it still flies somehow right like like it, it's it's instead of having a wingspan per se all of that is his actual belly and he swallows these uh, these cranes whole and he feeds off of the cranes that feed off of undeath. So, um, yes, I, I do like that idea. But one thing I was uh, thinking on, you know, as we were talking about this, was uh -huh. kind of like how a cactus grows in the desert, like collecting okay. water. So, okay. uh, not only, you know, like this giant uh, toad monster, but um, what if it's... Uh, so, you know, it, it kind of barrows itself, of course, and, you know, it lies in wait. But I'm thinking okay. of it having, instead of, like, the four toad legs, um, maybe, like, four cilia-like uh, limbs that, you know, just digs through the uh, sand in, you know, this uh, snake-like fashion. Ooh, okay. Okay. So uh, you're thinking not flying for this? Uh, well, I the... do want it to fly, and I'm thinking how something like that would, uh, something like that would fly. Uh, Ooh, maybe in the four we ha it has like a membrane, right? And it like does like a, a glide type of flight, like it can jump, right? And then it spreads itself like a flying squirrel. Oh, and just glides. And glides and catches the the things. Like it can jump really high and really far, right? Yeah, and just glides after these, and you know has has the membrane and the uh, the cilia. God, that's a uh, kind of it's kind of terrifying. That is kind of <laughs> terrifying. Um, I I actually like that mm -hmm. idea right, where. Like it, so it slithers. It slithers underneath the ground, right, and waits. And it can actually eat stuff on the ground, like attack stuff on the ground, right? Or it can jump up and and eat these things right out of the air. Okay, so here's here's what I'm thinking. Um, so it's got it's got the cilia uh, on it, and um, attached to the cilia are kind of like uh, fins. Um, that, you know, it can flex the cilia forward and the fins would be kind of like, you know, how a shark has like a singular, uh, fin or uh -huh. like, like web toes or so, like how it has right, like right, a, right. Yeah. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. web uh -huh. limb. It has, you know, four of these that it can move in any direction, uh, and it can glide with these and it's kind of looks like just this weird four, four limbed rocket thing when it leaps out of the ground, glides through the air, consumes something, and, uh, you know, goes back down. But one thing I was thinking, um, if it can leap so high and uh, do so much with these limbs, that it can, uh, I don't know if, like, maybe camouflage or uh, something, but I was thinking, like, it could uh, eat clouds um, in so much as it just leaps up and kind of, like, grabs a cloud and puts it into one of these limbs and just lingers uh, in the desert and kind of like an angelfish has that uh, thing that attracts prey. It is be kind of like a desert illusion of like, there's just this bubble of clouds on the ground, like within one of its like cilia limbs that's just there up from the sand and anything traveling through the desert might come and poke and like, see what's this? And then it leaps out and, you know, grabs that. Does that make sense? 
Um, I, I'm with you on that, although it doesn't it resonate too much with me. What I was thinking, uh, going on that idea, is that it emits a gassy type of, uh, like, kind of like smoke. Yeah, because I, I was thinking that... Dry could... ice. Think dry ice and how it just emits that. Yeah, I was thinking that... you could play with the idea of, like, illusions in the desert. Like, you know, your mind playing tricks on you. Oh, I, I like that idea. I do. But I was thinking, like, maybe it should be, like, maybe smell. Okay. That it, it, it shoots, uh, this shoots this... Like, it, it gets itself, like, oily or whatever. Like, it, the skin can emit, like, an oil. Which, when in contact with the air, makes a gas. And if they breathe that in, then they start seeing illusion. Like, if you were out and about, couldn't couldn't actually breathe it it just looked like a puff of uh of low hanging smoke you know okay um and, and, so and then you like think uh when clouds are or fog when fog have you ever seen fog out in the distance and you're like what's that in the middle of that valley there where's the valley you know yeah and you're like oh shit that's fog you know yeah, I was uh, that, thinking of like a uh, mirage, you know, like that shimmering, the weird way heat looks like water in a distance. Okay, yeah, the shimmering, okay. Yeah, and it, uh, oh gosh, you know, what if it makes the cloud and then the cloud, you know, drops and, you know, forms a little oily water-like so, puddle. So this is something you can borrow from from me. Uh, I borrowed it from uh, Nerdarchy. Um but uh, like and you know the word oasis yeah but the, it's not an actual oasis it's an ooze aces <laughs> it's an actual ooze like like uh, an actual cube right a gelatin cube thing yeah that looks like an oasis but it's not it's actually a living creature okay well we can go with the uh, cloud and the um and the uh you know like liquid on the surface of the sand um so oh gosh so now i'm thinking uh if these things because oh. like if you if you think about a mirage I... and like how that heat looks it's always silvery in appearance now i'm thinking yeah. these things have uh like just because they can barrel through the ground they have traces of mercury inside of them that you know they can kind of spit out this liquidy metal looking substance that would have that similar you know oozy appearance okay yeah i like that yeah uh and if they have mercury in them you know they're poisonous on bite attacks uh all right so mechanically what type of cr creature were you thinking this would be or what type of CR creature were you looking for it for? I'm I'm sorry, my uh, my voice cut out. It sometimes does that. So uh, if it has mercury in it, I miss what you said there. Oh, if it has mercury in it, it means it's poisonous on bite attacks. Okay, right, good. Okay. Um. Uh. And I got your second question. What kind of CR? Well. Uh, I hadn't really got that far yet because I haven't actually applied a uh, um, system to my uh, to my world. So, what do you think? Um, so if this is a natural occurring creature, uh, and just you know, uh, starting from step one, it's a dominant stat. You know, would it be wrestling? Uh, I think its dominant stat would be dexterity, I guess, moving the cilia limbs around and, um, and, uh, you know, grappling, uh, creatures and consuming them. Um, I am thinking, uh, yeah, so give it a high dex, um, and an O, and a high con, and an okay strength score, because they wouldn't be, you know, like, terribly strong. They'd be hoping for that one surprise and then just to incapacitate a target. Um, and, the, of course, the hardy constitution for the environment that it's uh, surviving in. 
Oh. Uh, as far as what type of CR, uh, most groups in my world are, um, most groups in my world right now are between level seven and uh, nine. So I'd be looking for things to uh, challenge them. I imagine these things wouldn't be uh, pack hunters. So a single one of them would have to be a uh, pretty uh, tough creature, which would mean um, for one fight against this thing to make it interesting for a group, it would need at least 150 to 200, or about 150 HP, which would uh, put it, you know, somewhere around CR uh, between 8 and 10. Um, and then, of course, if we give it any damage resistances, you know, that can adjust and uh, handle that. Um, trying to think if it would... Well, if it has... Well, I guess it wouldn't overtly be um, have resistance to poison, because uh, some poisonous things can still be poisoned by other things. Um, be fine with necrotic damage... Resistant to no. Uh, it actually, I think it should be uh, um, at least resistant to necrotic, if not immune, because it is going to be digging in blighted land. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, going to be eating dead things. So yeah, it have resistance right. to necrotic damage. Um. So uh, movement speed for these things. Um. How about we do? something very interesting okay uh they have zero uh movement um but on their turn they can move and uh as a part of their attack action uh or rather we give them a special uh action and uh we give them multi-attack that says uh they take you know two they take um, three attacks, and uh, they take three attacks, and then they also take their special action that we give them. And so they have zero movement, but they can move uh, forty feet in a direction. Um, um, and if they do, they have to move the full distance, and then we give them a glide speed. And then we also give them 15 feet reach. So it's like it's a, it's this lurking enemy that can't really move a lot. But when it does, it's just kind of, you know, like a pounce at something. Then it repositions and pounces at something else. Okay, I like it. I like it. Uh, I was thinking that the head would be in the body. So are you talking about a reach of the... Of, of the, the limbs. Of the limbs. So the yeah. grapple comes from the limbs, not from the mouth, because... I had the image of the mouth being the grappling thing. Okay, yeah. Well, it could shovel food uh, into its mouth. I, I, I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to see how we would want to. Yeah, yeah. I, the mouth would be, you're right, the mouth would be the grapple. And we don't give it a grapple attack. We give it something similar to, like, the uh, giant constrictor. If it hits with a bite attack... Uh, the target is restrained, and then, you know, it's a DC check on the target's turn to get out. And then, additionally, um, each of the limbs is a ranged attack, then, instead of it spraying, like, the gas at somebody. <gasps> oh, gosh! Now, I just, um, reminded myself of one of my favorite creatures from, um, 4th edition. Uh, did you ever get a chance to play with the Shadow Bat? No. No, the Shadow Bat, um, it didn't have a melee attack, but what it had, it was this flying creature, and they, you know, lived on the uh, tops of caves, and they were medium-sized, like, huge bats. Um, and they'd swoop down, attack a target, and then go back to the cave. And what the Shadow Bat had was a feature called a pass-by attack, where if it moved, it could make up to four, four attacks... Uh, well, some, you know, depending on the one you're uh, using. It could make, uh, like, uh, two. I don't think it, it was able to do four. But it had pass-by attack, or fly-by attack. I forget which one it was called. Where it would move past a creature attacking it. And then, you know, 
continue the rest of its movement. So I'm thinking we get we we take away we take away this thing's multi attack doesn't have multi attack. We give it one singular or two a uh, two actions. It has its uh, leap attack um, at somebody where it leaps 40 feet in a direction at something. And um, then uh, during that attack, uh, it has the secondary uh, limb attacks where if it moves by any creature, it can take up to four attacks um, in that leap movement. Of it, you know, jumps by somebody and then its limbs flex out and might hit some people. I like it. All right. Um, so, uh, I think the DC for this thing, since it's going to be a little bit higher of a creature, uh, should be uh, at least DC 15. Uh, as a strength check to get out of its jaw. Um, or uh, just an escape um, check, which, you know, can be strength or uh, acrobatics. Um, okay. Help. Get out of its jaws, which would mean its uh, proficiency bonus would be uh, at least four plus one. Um, maybe move it up to 16 to give it uh, 14 strength. That way it has plus two on its damage. Uh, okay. And if it's a huge creature, definitely, um, definitely a D10 of uh, damage for its mouth, or three D6, or actually, gosh, two D12 could spike so hard. Uh, three D6 caps at 18 damage. Yeah, three D6 for its uh, jaw attack. If it crits, it deals uh, six D6. Um, and so it's, you know, 3d6 plus, uh, 2, and then it's a, uh, then it's a DC 16, um, saving throw uh, to I think, escape. I think it should be less, uh, and here's why I think it should be less. Uh, we're talking about poison, so it, it, it's actually... Poison. Oh, yeah, we did forget about the bite attack. Yeah. So, so, so I think we should scale that down a bit. Uh, but have the poison constitution check. Okay, uh, yeah. So 2D... Or have a, have a, you know, if they fail it, it's this much, and if it, they pass it, it's only half that or something to that extent. Yeah. Uh, 2D6, how about 2D6 of, uh, of piercing damage from its uh, jaw? And then, um, you know, if you're bit by it, uh, constitution saving throw for um uh most poisons are 13 or 14 uh and if you fail your poison for a minute and then uh, of course you know the poison will deal another 2d6 of damage uh i'm thinking the limbs themselves just simple bludgeoning damage at uh like 1d8 or 1d10 a limb. Okay, I like that. Um, and then we give it a... So those are, those are its actions that it can take on its turn. Uh, I'm thinking we give it, um, you know, this, the special actions above, uh, of, or rather a special ability of um the mirage cloud that we were talking about where it exudes you know the cloudy substance um a uh, wisdom saving throw in the uh cloud uh otherwise um it has a uh, cover or it has a uh, mm. partial cloth cover uh, i like that yeah all righty so um uh, hit die for this thing. Uh, since it's a dexterity based creature, uh, I think it should be uh, D8. Um, and uh, 
said we wanted to give it about 150 HP. If we give it, uh, if we give it 16 constitution, it has a plus 3, that's 30. Uh, we need to give it 18 constitution. That'll give it a plus 4 to con. Um, all right, and then uh, we give it 15 hit die. What is uh, 15 times four? Uh, that's 60. All right, if we give it 15 D8, what is uh, four? Oh, okay, that puts it at 120 HP. If we move it up to to 18 hit die, that would uh, be uh, 136 HP, which would make this thing, and it has necrotic resistance. Um, it's going to be low on the HP scale uh, for a creature uh, within that range. But it is going to be a pretty uh, hefty uh, fight for anything moving against this. The other thing, uh, I think we should give it um, a... Uh, I think we should give it an action uh, where it can spend its action to submerge itself. Um, if it's uh, submerged, it gains uh, resistances on all damage uh, until the end of its turn. Or, uh, I, don't, I don't know about resistances. I think it should get uh, three-fourths cover. Oh, three-fourths cover? All right. Uh, and here's the reasoning why I think that. It's just, uh, like, how do you get uh, by just submersing yourself? Because it's, it's kind of under the sand or the dirt, but it's not, like, totally under the dirt, right? It's just kind of... You know, throw has dirt thrown on top of it, and I don't see that actually giving it resistances. Well, one of the things about sand too is sand has kind of like an impact protection of if you like gently stick your finger through sand, it's easy to push down through it. But if you were to like, uh, you know, take your Punch finger it. from the yeah. sky, yeah, it like you know, it's not an easy thing to just like pierce through because the harder you hit at it, the harder the the sand, you know protects so i was thinking you know if you have like a war hammer and you swing down at the sand the sand's going to take most of the blow rather than the uh the okay creature. well i i can see that um but i mean uh the three a higher ac to me just sounds better right yeah um, the problem problem with that is the sharpshooter feet would just like totally undo that yeah, the other thing with cover, too, I think cover only applies to range attacks. Uh, let's see. Okay, resistances is better, then. Oh, oh. I agree with you. No, 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 no. A, uh, let's see. When trees are more difficult, can benefit uh, degrees of cover. So, a target with three-quarters cover has plus five bonus to AC and uh, dexterity saving throws, not against range attacks, against just all attacks. So yeah, I, I'll say three quarters cover. That's good. It increasing its AC by five is huge, right? And okay. um, that's going to um, that's going to benefit to its um, uh, that's going to benefit to its uh, ability to survive a little bit longer with its low lower age people. Um, if it is uh, submerged, instead of submerging for a turn, since it has to spend its action to do that, uh, so, um, submerge until it takes uh, an attack action. Yeah, okay, yeah, I agree. All right. Um, so, uh, AC then for this thing. We said we were going to give it a dexterity of it as its highest stat. I think we should put its dexterity also at 18, which would be a plus a 4, which means it would have a base AC of a 14. Um, 
which means when it submerges, it goes to 19. I'd like it to be at least 21 when it's at, you know, a complete uh, defensive uh, mode, bare minimum. So we could give it natural armor of its body, you know, is just kind of hardened and start its AC at 12 plus its dexterity modifier, which would put it at 16. Okay. I like that. Alrighty. Um... AC, uh, do we want to give it spells? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Does not need any spells. Nah, I don't think it needs any spells. Uh, perceptions, uh, Tremor Sense. I think it definitely needs Tremor Sense. Yes, yes, I agree with Tremor Sense. Um, and, uh, it's Wisdom. I think it should be, uh, akin to, like, an owl. Just because, you know, it would need to be able to see these, uh, creatures from a distance that it's leaping at. Um, in a hawk has 14 wisdom, an owl has 12, and they're both trained in perfe perception. So, uh, I say, um, Let's, uh, give it 12 wisdom. That way, you know, it won't be super beefy. Give it 12 wisdom and then give it proficiency in perception. Uh, and proficiency in stealth. That way, it won't be super beefy to, um... It won't be super beefy to, uh, resist spells. I'm sorry, I uh, dinked out there. The other thing that uh, my mind was thinking about as I was uh, saying all of that, and it's a submerge, ac it's special action to submerge. Um, while it's submerged, I believe it should be allowed, um, it should have the text uh, while submerged. It can take a bonus action to make a hide attempt uh, to, you know, kind of like stop moving and lie in wait underneath the sand. Of, like, you know it's there, but, like, how deep did it go? You know, uh, is the sand, you know, still shifting right there and everything? You know it's underneath you, but, like, uh, when's it leaping out? No, this is, this is good stuff, Ren. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, I looked up the uh, thing for uh, Flyby this edition. Uh, flyby is um, the creature provokes no opportunity attacks when it flies out of an enemy's reach. Uh, Alright, so, reading the creature we have right now. Oh, we didn't name this thing. We did not. Alright. So... Let's uh, look up the uh, Latin word for toad. See what that is. Now, I know in my world, a huge... <laughs> I looked up Latin. Uh, a huge portion of the things are... Um, are based off of uh, Swahili language, just because I think it's such an interesting um, language. So I tend to blend uh, Latin and uh, Swahili, and I turned off my music. All right, so... Ironically, my uh, my character in our Fridays game is based solely off of the Swahili. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I thought Nyoka, like, I was like, man, that's super fitting for this setting. Uh, that, that would make sense. Um, let's see. Toad. Uh, bufo is the word for toad in Latin, and let's see what it is in Swahili. Uh, pamba. And, um, let's go with, uh, predator. I kind of like pamba. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Latin. I like the but at the end. I don't like the boof, bufo, though. Yeah. Because things have been called bufos before. Let's see. What is hunter? 
So in uh, Latin, uh, Venandi is hunter. And then let's uh, look up jellyfish. Because I kind of imagine this thing is like a super evil desert jellyfish. All right. And uh, the final thing, we'll look up hunter in Swahili. Oh, wow, that is a word. Wawindagi. Wawindagi. One dodgy. So, how about a... You said you like Pamba? Yeah. Um... How about a Ven... A Vimpamba? A Vimpamba? Or a Vimpondi? A Vimpondi? Ben Pondy, I like that. Uh, Ven Ven Pondy, V E N P A N D I, and that's like um, our P A M, and that's like uh, half of the frog, and then two thirds of like Latin hunter, of like frog hunter, you know. Ven Pondy. Or actually, for my setting, I'm going to name it a, uh, and, you know, a, you can keep that one, but for my setting, I'm going to name it the Vin Pomden, because the uh, suffix en on, um, in my world denotes death. Uh, so, you know, these would be hunters, and uh, they would be um, carrion animals, and uh, feeding on anything that, you know, passed by and that they could uh, grab spewing, you know, this gassy substance. So the death just kind of uh, makes sense for it. All right, so to go over, we got um, the Vimpondin. Um, it is, I'm assuming, a large uh, beast. Uh, would you say it's uh, on aligned, or do you want to push these things towards a uh, specific alignment? No, I think it's on aligned. I think it's, I think it's more interesting in eating than anything else. Okay. Um, it's got an AC of uh, sixteen and of twenty-one while submerged. Uh, it's got a hundred and thirty-six hit points. Uh, and those hit die come from um, 14, uh, or I'm sorry, 18 D8 uh, plus um, <laughs> 18 times 4. I forgot that number. Uh, 18 times 4. Uh, so that's going to be 18 D8 plus 72 because it's got a constitution modifier of 4. Uh, it's got zero speed, um, it's got a 40 feet, uh, leap, and then, uh, if it leaps, it can glide for, we'll say, half its speed, so 20 feet of gliding. Um, so, uh, it's, uh, zero speed, 40 feet leap, um, 20 feet gliding. Uh, or I guess 20 feet flying. Um, it's got a strength of uh we put the strength at 14 it's got a dexterity of 18 a constitution of 18 uh intelligence i don't think these things are going to be too smart so i say four on the intelligence uh side okay. um it's got a wisdom of 12 because it's perceptive and uh i imagine these wouldn't be social creatures at all and uh it would be like at a four for charisma, for just being, you know, like a lone hunter. Um, it's skills, it's got uh, perception and stealth. Uh, it's senses, it's got tremor sense for, um, how about 80 or 60 feet of tremor sense? Or maybe that's too much. How about 40 feet of Tremor Sense? Sounds good. 
All right, tremor sense 40 feet. Um, I think it should also have, uh, since it's got the Celia limbs that can move around, I think it should also have a blind sense for its reach of 15 feet. Uh, if it can't see, you know, if something's near it, it can still uh, just kind of like feel it and then hit it. Right. Uh, so blind sense, 15 feet. Um, languages, it doesn't speak. None. And, uh, we said we were shooting for this thing, um, between 8 and 10. I think it's gonna land, um, on the upper side of, uh, or on the lower side of 10. Of uh, it's, it's gonna die quickly if you can hit it, but it does have a lot of interesting actions that it can do. Um with it being uh, closer to uh gosh um some not not a dragon but just you know like a miniature dragon in that it has so many additional things it brings to the table right so i'm gonna say challenge uh 10 especially since it can poison people for a minute uh, damage resistances it's got resistance to uh necrotic and it's got resistance to all damage when some. Oh no, it doesn't have resistance to all damage when submerged. So it's just got resistance to necrotic. Alright. It's got uh, the special action of a uh, flyby. Um. And uh, in addition, we'll put a. Uh, well, actually, we're not going to do it flyby because flyby is a thing. We'll call it leap by. Um, it provokes no opportunity attacks when it leaps by. Uh, additionally, it can make um, up to. Well, I think if it can take all four of its attacks every turn, I think it should have to choose. It can make two limb attacks. At uh, creatures, it uh, jumps by. Uh, two limb attacks. If it leaps. Uh, special action submerge. Uh, three quarter. It gains three quarters cover until it uh, takes a another standard action. Additionally, it can hide as a bonus action. And then its uh, final special action is Mirage Cloud. Um, gains uh, partial cover uh, on a DC 13 uh, wisdom saving throw. Well, actually, that's going to be a DC 14 because it's got plus one to wisdom. Um, all right. Uh, then it's got its uh, bite attack, um, which if you fail, uh, its bite's going to be um, two plus its... Uh, it's going to be plus six to hit uh, and deal uh, 2d6 of piercing. And if it... Um, if uh, a creature is hit by the bite, DC 13 um, constitution save uh, or be poisoned for one minute. Uh, I think we should move the damage to three piercing and uh, leave just like, because being poisoned in itself is enough of a thing for failing that save. Okay. Uh, so 3d6 of damage, and then dc13 uh, con save, uh, or become poison. Uh, and then it's got all of its limb attacks. Its limb attacks have 15 feet of reach. Fifteen feet reach. Um, they are going to roll off of dexterity, so they would be uh, plus 8 to hit. And... Um, 
If it's making two of these now instead of four, I think it's okay to move that to a d10 of damage. Of 1d10 plus four. And that would mean um, on max damage, uh, just on a regular damage roll, it would be 14, and it can do two of those, so that's going to be 28 damage a turn. Um, which, if you're fighting just a party of four or five people, that's a uh, decent enough output of it's going to be um, between its bite and limb attacks. It's going to be dealing, you know, hopefully about a third to a, a third to half of a player's health each turn. Um, with the chance to, you know, submerge and, uh, stall out the, uh, fight a little bit. Um, and, uh, it itself is probably going to take about three to four turns to be killed, uh, with the amount of health that it has. And, uh, okay, so here's the final thing. Do we want to give it reactions? No, I don't think it needs any reactions other than an opportunity attack. Yeah, I don't think it needs any reactions. All right. Uh, the Vin Pomden lives. Woot. It is the evil giant desert frog jellyfish. Which I don't think a more terrifying statement. It's a flying evil jellyfish frog. I called them death toads in parentheses, but uh, maybe I should do jellyfish toads. Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking of just like replacing their, you know, hoppy hop limbs with the uh, basilia limbs that can move in any direction. No, I like it. I like it. Alrighty. So uh, for... Uh, those who watch, um, I hope this was uh, interesting. Um, I will uh, at some point add this to our wiki, and then I will put the wiki in the description eventually. It's not going to be there tonight, but um, when that link is posted, it will be in the Discord. Actually, that's a better thing. Join us on Discord. That link is probably in the description. And if it's not, I will go and add that right now. And uh, on the Discord, we have a World Info uh, channel where I will post this once we have it completely uh, typed up. So, uh, yeah. And uh, anybody who wants to, you can use the Vin Palmden too for your uh, setting. Uh, did you want to say anything before we uh, close tonight, Shelby? Uh, no. Thank you guys for uh, joining us. I had a good time and uh, learned something from Brandon. All right. Enjoy your night.